Good morning, everybody, and a warmly welcome to Piban Morning Talks. Uh, my name is Aya Berlund. I'm Interim Managing Director of Piban. This morning, our uh, subject is how to improve strategic decision-making process. And we have our guests, our bar partners, Palava Global Ladies, Anna and Salla. Warmly welcome. Thank you. Uh, would you kindly please present yourselves uh, and tell a little bit about your background? Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Salla Hannan. I am the CEO and co-founder of Palava Global. Um, I, I founded the company with Ilka Lavas around four years ago um, after moving back to Finland a couple of years earlier, starting uh, my previous company, then working for a startup. And um, when I met Ilka, we started talking, he's taken several keys companies overseas and we realized that there are many things we could do together to help Finnish startups um, make better decisions when they um, grow internationally. So that is, that is why we founded Father Global. Uh, what have you studied? Um, I studied international business in the, in the UK. Um, I specialized in, in market strategies and, and so forth, for example. Perfect. So, yeah. yeah, lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Anna? Yeah, I joined Balava a couple of months uh, later from there. And um, my background is marketing. And I've been to um, Latin America mostly and saw some uh, in the uh, FinPro okay. spirit. Like, okay. saw some uh, business Finland company. nowadays. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, saw some Finnish companies um, there um, making some some decisions that that I kind of wanted to maybe be around be be more present to to um, consult there and like when I saw the problems when I came back to Finland then then that's what I really wanted to work at okay and export promotion is really close yeah. to my heart so. which which countries you lived in Latin America Chile and Mexico lovely yeah. And did you work as analysis or, or a consultant? Uh, business developer, actually. Okay, so cool. From Very the field. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, normally, at this point, we take a Menti uh, questionnaire. And uh, Rasim, would you please open that to us? So please, everybody, uh, you can copy the, the link from the chat and uh, utilize code uh, 65973. Five, nine. You can find the code up there on the screen. And uh, the question to the audience is that what factors influence strategic decision making? So please give your, your insight and your ideas uh, to this uh, question. And in the meantime, when you are writing, we are discussing here. Um, so, uh, Salla. What are the typical situations where strategic decision making is made? Um, I think there are two typical situations. It's either when companies are looking for significant growth. That's when they have to make several important decisions, right? And the other is kind of the opposite. It's when things are not going so well yeah. and you have to uh, make maybe some difficult decision. decisions. Um, for example, when, when companies come to us, uh, it's, it's usually when they're looking for growth in, in new markets. So they have to make several decisions on which markets to enter, how to enter those markets and, and so forth. Um, or if they are already in some markets that are not performing that well, they yeah. might want to know why not. Uh, and that's where we can help them make better decisions, maybe on um, doing things differently in, in that market or choosing a different market. So it's like kind kind of two alternatives you have to, or or you are proactive and and you you make the decision exactly. uh, yeah. in a good time beforehand. You yeah. have to before you have to do that. Okay. So um, anything you want to add, Anna, at uh, Salas <laughs> reply? Okay. So we got what factors influence strategic decision making? We have this uh, organizational culture, resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, structure and policies. Mm. Yeah. Ladies, anything you want to add to this? Um... Well, I think resources are really, um, really interesting in a way that it's kind of a the chicken and an egg 
problem that sometimes you have to make decisions based on the resource that you have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need to do something that you don't have the resources for, and then you have to plan to get those resources. So um, kind of chicken it's and egg. interesting how it kind of goes yeah. into the chicken and egg problem. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, that's right. Um, uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit about the policies? Uh, what does it bring a bell to you? Uh, what kind of policies um, or criteria uh, organizations should have uh, on, uh, on policies, policy making? Company policies. Yeah, company policies. Or pro policies, HR policies. I don't know, it just came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll discuss that in some some shape or form, but kind of like what are the the um, criteria that you use in the company to make decisions? What are the basis that you use? Because sometimes um, you see that decisions can be made with little to no basis, or or um, or if that's the case, then in a strategic making um, decision making, it's um, kind of problematic if you just if you're winging it. You should always be mindful and have maybe a policy of to be mindful but why are you making this decision? yeah what are the yeah. Basis for this? yeah well at least i i uh, pump into to cases where uh decisions are made without any criteria exactly and that is in my opinion a problem um in a big organization for yeah. instance um, that might be uh, a challenge um anything else that uh, you want to discuss about those um signals we got from Menti. Uh -huh. Oh, there are plenty, few, plenty of more. more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought about the organizational culture and, and how that affects things. We're going to talk about who should be involved in decision making mm -hmm. um, later, because personally, I love a flat organization, but mm. it's not always um, mm. It's not always optimal, especially when talking about really important decisions, strategic decisions. It can become a shouting match, and that's not how you should make important no. decisions at all. <laughs> um, so, kind of thinking about who should be involved in, in what decision is, is also something we're going to discuss. It, it's actually a matter of power uh, uh, within the organization, isn't it? Yeah. Like that whole and a hierarchy. Yeah. 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 And obviously, you can listen to everyone, but you can. I, I don't believe that you can have everyone involved or at least making every single decision mm -hmm. because it should be based on <clears throat> data rather than opinion. That's how uh, I say. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. Good point. Excellent point. And I've been told that it's always good to have somebody like the key persons uh, get together and make some kind of uh, basic assumption and then you test it around mm -hmm. in the organization yeah. and, and kind of sell the idea to the others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, well, yeah. And data helps in telling. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, anything else? Um, ownership strategies mentioned, of course. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on the company how how they want to um, include um, owners, for example, and and so forth. Um, how many owners are there, and and, and so forth. Um, if you think about um, investors, for example, how how involved are they? Um, especially if they're not board members, if they're also board members, then that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything actually starts from our ownership strategy. What is the reason of the company and uh, yeah. like, what do we want to achieve? Um, are they or are all the owners um, like, um, do they have the same kind of vision? What yeah. is needed to, to do and, and so on? Okay. Um, anything else that you want to? Discuss. No, I think we will discuss mm -hmm. many of these. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, participants, for for these signals. Yeah. And then I have a question to to Sala. What are what is the first step of the strategic decision making process? Well, I think the most important step is, of course recognizing those important decisions. It may sound really obvious, but startups do tend to run through decisions and not think about which decisions they should spend a bit more time on. Mm -hmm. um, because there are so many decisions to make every day um, when you're growing fast. So you might just not recognize those really important 
ones. Um, and therefore, I think it's really important to stop for a minute and, and kind of understand what are those decisions that are coming up uh, that we should spend a bit more time on. And how do you do that in practice? Um, well, I think we're going to talk about that as well um, in how to, yeah, how to, how to recognize those strategic decisions. Um, yeah, and I can elaborate on that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, like if you think of how to define what decision is strategic or not, there might be a lot of theories for this, but the most practical one I would say is, um, will it make your break for your company? Okay. Um, if you get it wrong. Okay. That's a really um, concrete way to think about things. If if I get this wrong, will it kind of uh, destroy it, our company? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a really yeah. nihilistic yeah, way yeah, of thinking. Yeah, or at least set us back for yeah, months. Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. 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 Or will it divert closer to 1% or closer to 100% of our budget effort, everything we're doing to the wrong um, yeah. cause or, or wrong um, yeah. objective if we get it wrong? And because um, um, startup culture is really, like Salah said, paying for the fail fast kind of mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. But exactly. some, yeah. some, com uh, some decisions are, are um, those that if you fail them fast, then you might fail altogether. Yeah. And, um, but also like strategic decisions, if you get them right, then uh, it doesn't all just mean that you avert a crisis it means that you have a competitive advantage in exactly. in your use yeah. of resources mm -hmm. in your um mm -hmm. in your product and everything you're making yeah mm -hmm. so in principle any decision is better than no decision at all yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But i think you should like like i said before you should pause um maybe a bit before that and um, and see like what what is the real world um phenomenon or, or real world thing that I have to base this on I can't decide on my own like we say in a glass box that yeah that this is how the world works yeah. and if your um, decision is it needs to be based on the real world then you need kind of information yeah. what is the mechanism what is the how does my industry work in this and that's what mm. and how do you identify those phenomena that are relevant to your company what kind of process do you utilize at Palama Global? We break companies into little parts. Yeah. <laughs> and then see like what is uh it's mostly common sense really. Mm -hmm. Like you just you just see like if if our um if we have to use um for our product we need this kind of data, for example. And um we can make all that data because it's really expensive. So then does it exist? Who makes this data? Then you just find those people out, you look for if it if it really exists, you just counter engineer your way back in the real world. And okay. sometimes you need to find things out, but that's really what market research is for. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in strategic decision making, you kind of need to um, identify the strategic themes mm -hmm. that are important mm -hmm. for your company to, to grow. Yeah, and I, I would you map, write? I, yeah, I would yeah. map all the decisions that are coming up. Um, one example is is recruiting people, mm -hmm. right? Not every decision in recruitment is as important, right? If you're hiring an office assistant and you get it wrong, it's not going to break your company. No. But if you hire the wrong CMO, mm -hmm. uh, you you will at least lose a few months. Yeah. That's you know you that's a lot. If you think about your runway, you it's very pressured, and if you lose six months of that, yeah. you are in trouble, <laughs> right? So these are the kind of decisions that I, I would just map out all the different decisions that I have and think about, okay, how crucial is this? How should we spend more time on this or not? If it's an office assistant, probably not. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna spend months finding data or information yeah. and or, or hiring a, maybe a HR consultant, right? Yeah. Audience, please uh, write uh, your questions on the chat so that um, we would like to hear your your questions also yeah. if you want to hear something from Anna and Salla. Uh, um, next question is that uh, who should be involved in strategic decision making? Yeah, this is a really good good question. Um, and like I said before, I appreciate a, a flat hierarchy in, in, in many situations. And I do think everyone should be involved and you should ask for people people's thoughts because you, you've hired great people so mm -hmm. you should um 
kind of respect that and, and respect their um, thoughts. But at the same time, um, when it comes to these really important decisions, like I said, it can't be a shouting match. No. Um, and it has to be based on, on data, not just people's opinions. Of course, they can, people can, can have expertise and, and that's, I think that's part of it. You should take that as part of your kind of like your data set almost. Mm -hmm. um, but then decide who is the key decision maker on this. Uh, and for the most important decisions, I think it is the leadership team's responsibility to get that data and present that to the board. Yeah. And then Absolutely. and then yeah. make that decision. So even yeah. a board can't really make a decision if they don't have the relevant information to make that decision. So how how we often do things, um, for example, in market selection with our with our market scanner, um, we present the company with at least two different scenarios that mm -hmm. they can then present to their board. Okay. Um, and then the board can discuss these different scenarios. For example, if we look at ten different markets, um, they always get a score right mm -hmm. but it's not always black and white so we can build two different scenarios where in one um we choose a market where you can go with a limited budget for example yeah. or we can look at the market with, with the most potential and then within the board you can discuss whether okay do we want to go with a limited budget or exactly. do we find a yeah. bigger budget and then go for the bigger potential yeah. for example mm -hmm. but the, the board needs to have this kind of data um an analysis so that they can make a better informed decision yeah yeah i like your approach a lot yeah yeah that's good and uh how, how to build a strategic roadmap uh, uh for portfolio startups uh, do you have any any uh, advice on that yeah well um <clears throat> i would like i said before um i would bring the, the strategy as close to uh the real world or as close to practice as you yeah. can. But the, the problem is that uh, when startups are present their plan, it's kind of based on the potential or the, um, the whimsical estimates of like what is what is going to happen when we bring this to market. Mm -hmm. But then um, there's always things that you have to do or have before you can realize that potential. Mm -hmm. So uh, just talking about the potential isn't isn't enough. But you have to kind of see like what list all the things that you need in order to get there for example if we need kind of backcasting methods yes yeah um uh, which i think is the most practical one yeah, um, sure. so if you need a sales goal for example sales you can mm -hmm. do this for then marketing and the whole um whole thing people um and everything is connected obviously um but if we're for a sales goal let's say in two years we need to sell this because this is our pricing, we need to sell this to, I don't know, 10,000 companies. And then um, where are we going to find those 10,000 companies? Are there, are there spread across like, different markets? Which markets are those? What is, is the cost to get them? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Who is going to sell to these people? And if for this goal, we need to sell to, I don't know, 30 companies every month, who is going to do, do that sell, yeah. sales in various markets? Or um are we going to go back to the drawing board and kind of look for a more scalable solution okay yes okay that's understandable uh can you give some concrete examples uh, about the uh strategic decision making that when everything went very well like a success story or or then a, a catastrophe yeah. <laughs> either or, or both. we have few of those yeah. <laughs> please share your experiences to us what to yes. avoid? Uh, you want the void of yeah, the no, 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 You choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would I would highlight one um, one story where where things went really well. So the same example I mentioned earlier that was uh, this company that that had a data platform based on open data. Yeah. So if they had to make um, or produce all that data themselves, then the business model wouldn't wouldn't be viable. Yeah. And so then when they were choosing a, um, uh, choosing a market, then they needed one uh, that had the local data openly available. Okay. So then uh, what we did with them actually was we went in and, and searched if that data was available or not, because if it wasn't, then it was not a, uh, option. an mm -hmm. option for yeah. them to go. Yeah. 
and um, that went really well. And now they have the, the information on on which markets to avoid, which markets to go to. And that's, Lovely. that yeah. is very, very strategic very of them. Yeah. Yes, very because, yeah. because it kind of, um, it eliminates the, the catastrophes mm -hmm. and then um, gets you going to the right direction and you're not using resources for the, for the wrong one. Well, then obviously we have a lot of um, catastrophes. <laughs> they come to us after the catastrophe. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, that they come to you too late. They yeah. should come to you earlier. That's why we're with yeah. Fivan, because we want to get to everybody like, yeah. in the very first stages of... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, before the investment gets yeah. spent, yes. Um, but yeah, for example, uh, a strategic decision on uh, market selection that went uh, wrong um, was this company that um, kind of was contacted by a market expert or a translator that, that said like, hey, I think you have a chance in France. And uh, so I know French. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know which, if it was a French person or Finnish living yeah. there, but, yeah, anyways. but offered to translate everything to, uh, to French and like, hey, you can then use your marketing in, in, in France. Okay. And they did because of this one contact and um, thinking that there is this huge potential to be unlocked Sounds behind excellent. this because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Promising. because somebody contacted yeah. us. This is yeah. very common. Very yeah. common. You have someone, especially when Americans contact Finns, we get super excited when they tell us we have so much potential oh, yeah. in the US so that, you know, we should enter and, you know, we love hearing that stuff. Of course. Um, but it happens with all markets. You get someone approaching you, telling you, hey, you should come here. I will help you. Mm -hmm. And then in this case, they started marketing in France. It didn't work. They had done it for multiple years. They didn't know why it worked, why mm -hmm. it did not work. What a pity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they still spend, I think, lots of money in, in three different markets. And none, yep. none of them are working. They have no idea. Finnish market was doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. But like. Yeah, but none of the other markets are doing doing well and they have no idea. So they, they cannot even fix this problem. Yeah. Do you have any advice on that? That uh, well, when should they have uh, understood that this is enough now? Mm. Uh, no go anymore. Well, I don't <laughs> think they should have gone in the first place. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, because it's not a good enough reason to choose a market that a translator contact it's not it's not difficult to find a translator it's reactive, in market. It's, it's mm. reactive not strategic mm. yeah mm. exactly mm. so you are you, they should have stopped at that point and thought okay how do we know that you know france is a good market for us yeah. mm. and before spending a, a cent in mm. that market is looking at markets and choosing the best one then if they find out that france is in fact the best market for them then they find out the best well first you build a strategy and then you understand what kind yeah. of expertise you need in the first yeah. place it, you cannot build it on one expert because that is not a, that's not the most difficult part in entering a market finding someone who knows about the market or who can translate your website yeah <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, okay. that's not that's not difficult yeah so first you have to find out which market to enter, how to enter it, and then yeah. build that team that can help yeah. you with that. Mm -hmm. Well, can you then uh, share with us a, a success story where everything went very well that you have done uh, together with your client? Um, usually we start with the, with the very first, like Polav is a, is a young company and we've, we've like grown with clients. Uh, but usually when we start with a, with a client, they're in the first phases of of internationalization which is where we can most help and um so then we're kind of looking for that our own success story that went super well well i think the one from yesterday tell about the interview you had yesterday with a client of ours. oh yes actually from from Fibon as well um well they kind of jumped the gun a little bit <laughs> they um decided a market without really doing that much research and then we did the market scanner for them and it just, it just um, happened to be, they made a good decision. I just remember the, the CEO's face when, when we presented the results. He was just like, so, <laughs> very so he really, had a hunch. He had a your, hunch, your but he didn't know. kind of uh, proved, uh, gave a proof that, that yeah. he was right or her. He and I sure. asked him yesterday when we were talking about this, yeah. like, it's, <clears throat> it's probably a bit, 
um, silly to kind of see like what would have happened if that was not the result. Yeah. Um, but then they were like, well, I think we would have just pressed the emergency exit button yeah. <laughs> at that point because they were they were starting in that market wasn't yeah mm -hmm. and like diverted all of the investment mm -hmm. to the different and they also said about how they're going to be using the scanner in the future right yeah to um, plan for the next 10 years uh, just for curiosity how much does uh, this kind of scanner uh, service cost for a startup yeah so so um usually we look at around 10 markets um, and that's about 2,000 per market, so 20,000. 20, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. And how much time should one utilize in, in decision making, all in all? Do you have any, any rule of thumb? Mm, I think definition is, again, your, your best friend. Uh, define what information you need to make this decision, because information gathering is probably going to be the the lengthiest part of yeah. course you can you can like um, think about it for months and months and months and never make the decision but yeah. like in real terms what takes the most time is probably the information gathering so then you should define what information you need as a basis for mm -hmm. this particular decision and then um, that's basically what tells you how much yeah, and we can't really gonna... say for other people. So if you need some expertise and ask the experts how long it's mm -hmm. going to take. Mm -hmm. For us, it take, for example, with market scanner, it takes eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So that's if you talk about ten markets. Yeah. That's Producing like the data. Norm, and is it is it normal that uh, companies really screen ten markets uh, at the same time, or or like make that? No. Or, or, or is it because in my opinion, uh, companies usually contemplate between three to five markets or something is it really like 10 markets you should yeah they, they often come to us and say hey how about we look at three markets mm -hmm. but the problem is if you look at three markets and often it's sweden norway denmark oh, sort yeah. of thing mm -hmm. right yeah but then how do you know that the, but those are the best markets you yeah. won't know okay this is the best out of three but mm -hmm. how we do we first kind of screen all markets mm -hmm. right we, we look at the globe Almost. Globe, yeah. And usually you can obviously take out quite a few, or we have this pre screening process yeah. where we take out kind of obviously bad markets, mm -hmm. right? And then we look at 10 quite different markets. So we find opportunities you weren't aware of. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good point. Yeah. Because you have some kind of bias. Exactly. You, have, yeah. you always mm -hmm. have a bias and you think yeah. it's going to be this, this, or this. Yeah. And almost always, this, the, this one from yesterday was an exception. Nine times out of 10, their hunch is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay it's been wrong so Shit. many times yeah <laughs> yeah that's so scary exactly yeah. so for example for, for one actually also um uh, a fiban company who who was sure that um the uk was the best market for them mm -hmm. and we looked at 10 markets and actually found out that the uk was not even close to being one of the best markets so now they've entered um two other markets in the, like on a different continent both of them are different continents okay. so it wasn't even close the hunch was not close and that's what we're trying to do we're not just trying to find the best out of three we're trying to find the best possible thank market thank you so much this was very important yeah because we yeah. want to find the best product market fit we want mm -hmm. to find the market where you can get the most out of your um investment on that market exactly. and so forth but so you cannot do that if you compare three markets then yeah. yes we can find yeah. the best out of three but not yeah. the best overall and then Thanks. when we looked at what what um startups do after the market scanner and then it's interesting interesting to notice that that they don't always go for the one that got the best score mm. it's like maybe in the top 10 uh, the top uh, ho hopefully in the top, <laughs> but I mean the top three maybe yeah yeah but um, there's one company recently that got Italy as their first market. They were not considering Italy. Like, I wow, know. I didn't. I have no idea that Italy would come first. Yeah. Like, eh. okay. But then it was it was too much of a stretch for them in the in the in the strategy or in their head. Like, I can't do Italy. Like, <laughs> I can't. Like, it's very interesting that yeah. the data says that this is the best market for you. But mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna go for the. But well, the, the market they wanted to go to was actually their worst market. So at yeah, least they at they, least they averted that. Yeah. Okay, but you helped them anyways. Yeah. 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 
Have you ever met a situation uh, with your client uh, concerning strategic decision making that they, the decision makers <clears throat> do have uh, like um, different opinions that uh, they are in a battle that whose decision is the right one? Or how, how, to, uh, how to make the consensus or, or you get the point? Well, that's the thing. We can't really make the decision for them. We can only no. offer them the expertise and the data to or help them make exactly and mm. say, these are the scenarios that you should choose from. And then um, have have the, the board um, discuss that, the leadership team discuss that. Um, so yes, quite often, quite often it happens. Um, but I do think that actually after, for example, our market standard project, they 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 come to a conclusion together. I don't yeah. think they have been, we haven't witnessed too many fights, I don't think, <laughs> afterwards. What happens a lot more often is that they they have um they have an idea when they come to us and then it proves to be wrong and it that takes them a while to get their head around. Mm -hmm. Kind of let that go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just letting letting go. Exactly. Idea. Exactly. Yeah. Um so that is usually what we witness. But I I, I do think that um, in the end they they agree on on something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if they can have as many people in their lives or, or around them that kind of encourage them to make all the decisions, not based on feeling or gut feeling, but, but data, then if you just get that for, for all the investors, maybe, mm. um, yeah, like encourage the portfolio startups to, to really look at the data and put yeah. their feelings aside for a little bit. <clears throat> and not just in, in market selection, but, but everything. Mm. Well, uh, most of the leaders and, and companies tend to have some kind of uh, their own way to way to make uh, decisions. And now the question is that uh, what are the steps to improve your decision making process? Do you have any like list what to do to, to improve your, your existing decision making process? I would say the most important thing is to, like I said before, to recognize those important decisions. It's almost like you map out all the decisions and you say, okay, these are the important ones. These are the ones we need to um, spend more time on. You decide on whose responsibility it is to then, to then gather the data you need. Um, and as an investor, I would expect that. I would demand to have that data, expertise, something that you can then base your decision on. I think that is really important. Mm -hmm. And then That's you can, right. yeah. And then you come together. And also I would like to say that not just data, because you can get like endless amounts of data. Mm -hmm. It's 2021, it's not difficult <laughs> to find some data yeah. and print it yeah. out, you know? That's not hard, but have it analyzed as well. Mm -hmm. So you have, for example, these scenarios, something that you can actually discuss because no board member has time to go through like, you know, pages and pages of Excel sheets or whatever, right? Mm, mm. So you need that analysis of that data as well, um, that you can then discuss together and make that decision. Lovely. That was very good crystallization of our, our discussion here. I think it's time for us to move on to, to go through the uh, questions uh, on chat side. Um, there is at least one question from Sami uh, Halonen, evolving strategy lean at roadmap level is quite common in startups. What are the essential strategic processes to establish for scaling to growth company? Anna Salla. In the scaling phase, uh, during the roadmap, if I understood correctly. Mm -hmm. How do you understand that? See all the way yes. to there. Um, evolving strategies lean at a roadmap level is quite common in startups. What are the essential strategic processes to establish for scaling to growth company? Strategic yeah, process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have some scale scale ups um, using the market scanner, for example, as well. Um, I would say it is it is the same counter um, engineering that, that you can use in any phase, kind of bringing, bringing it closer to reality, uh, putting the, the point where we want to be at, and then 
moving your way back from there. What do we need? Um, how many markets do we have to open? How many people do we have to um, hire? And if you just as, a, as an exercise, if you just like do that every once in a while, then it, it brings the whole operation closer to reality, in my opinion. Sami, uh, is this, uh, uh, did you get your answer? <laughs> yeah, please write to the, the um, uh, chat if you want to elaborate more on, on this question. Um, any ideas, any other ideas at this point? It's time for Q and A. Hmm. What would you like to ask? These ladies are here for you now. Yeah. <laughs> so utilize so either, either about uh, decision-making, international expansion, for example, now is a good time to ask anything about international expansion or even if it's a market question, we can try mm. and answer those as well. Uh, anything you want to know, happy to, happy to answer any questions related to any of Oh, then you just gave all the ideas already. <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, but uh, just to say that the main reason why we are with, with Viban is to make sure that um, investors have the tools to help their startups make, make better decisions um, and help them become profitable as, as soon as possible, really, uh, and help avoid those mistakes that we've seen so many times mm. um, and actually the reason why we talked about market scanners so much is that a couple of years ago uh, when we first started we got so many companies coming to us um, telling us that they they'd gone to markets they failed what do we do now mm. and we thought mm. oh no they spent 50,000 100,000 yeah. half a million going to a market that is not good for them and they, they wasted three years for example and we really wanted to change this um because startups can't afford to try five four or six times mm. um all companies make the wrong decision when it comes to market entry um starbucks have made the wrong decision ikea have made the wrong decision mcdonald's all these big corporations i think any company that have grown internationally have have made the wrong decision um but they can they can afford it they, it doesn't matter well Okay, it's going to hurt a little bit if you end up <laughs> losing a few million, a few million euros. But if you're a startup, you don't get that many chances. Yeah. So we want to make sure that they they succeed the first time. That's mm. kind of that's kind of the thinking behind it. And and market selection is just su such a big decision. It is it's really really big. And if you get that wrong, um, you're in trouble. It Most will divert. Like you're, you're going to be investing to that market. It's an investment decision. Mm. Yeah, you're going to be investing in that market from here on. If you decide now, let's go to France. This is the point on yeah. where on onwards you're going to be investing in there. And if all that is diverted into the wrong place, yeah. if you choose wrong. So still about your your scanner uh, service. Um, can you a little bit tell a little bit more about that? Do you, for instance, if, if a client has a product, uh, do you do you test the product there on, on the market or, or how do you operate? We find indicators of um, what are what are the kind of um, indicators for uh, demand that are present in the market. So what do you what drives your demand? If mm -hmm. it's um, the need for Give me an example. <laughs> okay, so for example, there's one SaaS company that have a um, how is it like a, a it's like a medical SaaS company, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And for them, what was important was to know, for example, how many people used five or more drugs at the same time, okay. things like that, or who make decisions on writing prescriptions, things like that, so that they understand what are the market conditions. We don't look at <laughs> general um data like gdp because it's not we don't think it's it's a uh, you know data that you should use for uh, decision making but we look at all the things that will drive your demand but also drive your costs on that market so for SaaS companies for example you need to understand what are your marketing costs going to look like mm -hmm. that market because you can have a market that has lots of potential like the us is something mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. plenty of potential but then your um, market entry costs are so high that you realize you do not have um, you don't have the, the resources to enter that market. So we look at both. We also look at different risks 
um, operating environment uh, in that market for your company. So what are the different things you need to take into consideration um, and so forth. So what do you need from the market? What do you need present? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you need the consumers to do for yeah. your, or the, or the, if it's a business to business yeah. Yeah. entity, if, you, if you're selling to, uh, uh, like Salah said, to um, basically a healthcare industry or healthcare sector, what does the healthcare uh, service have to look like in that country yeah. for our, our solution to be uh, successful in there? What are the things that we need present? Okay. And, and do you also help with the budget allocation? How much the company should uh, budget to, to so, entering that market? So basically, when we look at, we look at um, the costs, um, you can then build your budget based on that. It is, again, based okay, on, on so real like, numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but usually for companies, actually the most important part of the process is not even finding the best market. It is, it is understanding what you need, how, how you know what to look for in a market. Um, so the indicators are actually, it's a really good process. They're like, okay, this is what I should be looking for in any market, so regardless of. You, you design the indicators always always case with, by case yes it has to be yeah. and that's a, that's an important mm -hmm. process and for that we use several experts because it's really important that you yeah. get that right if you look at the wrong indicators the, the exactly. result is wrong will be wrong right yeah. so that is the most important process and that's something that companies can use in the future even if they decide in the future to look for the data themselves they yeah. understand what is the key data so like i said finding the data Yes, we have our tools for it. We know how to do it. We do it more uh, efficiently, I think, than, than people who are not experienced. But the most important part is understanding what data you should be looking for, what really indicates your success in a market. Then we go in and search for that data. And like I said, we can do it quite efficiently because we do it all the time. That's our day job, right? So we know which tools to use. We can do it in several languages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then when we have all that data, we then analyze, like we build those scenarios for the companies so they can go and discuss those results. So it's not yeah. just the data set that you're then stuck with, yeah. but you actually have analyzed data that you can, you can work with. My final question for you ladies is that what kind of information uh, um, resources you utilize? Where do you get your information from? Yeah, that's, that's a commonly asked question. We, we usually use four different sources. First is, of course, public data. Mm -hmm. They can find, um, especially in, in, in Europe, there's plenty of data. There's so much data available. Mm -hmm. If you know where to look, uh, Europe, that is it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's very good. And then, of course, we use, uh, use um, private data or one that we pay for. So we have different subscriptions or we, we kind of buy it on the go. Uh, and then when these fail, and, and usually we cannot... Um, complete a market scanner with just these two. Um, then we have, of course, our colleagues um, in different markets that we can so we can contact. Partners, partners yeah, around yeah, the globe. Exactly. Yeah. So we know who to who to then contact. And if they uh, cannot help us, then we will contact, for example, um, unions or embassies or whoever in that market okay. um, to, to get the data. That's and sometimes needed. it's just the, the average job of that, mm -hmm. that company or uh, that market, I mean. Because um, depending on the client, depending on yeah. the client, it's, mm. it's like okay, I need to know uh, how is how what is the typical coffee machine mm. found mm. in homes. Well, you as a Finn, yeah, could say that for the Finnish people, and then you yeah. could elaborate. Hey, we are running out of time. There is one uh, interesting question: Does Market Scanner include looking for possible dis, uh, distribution partners? Okay, so. With the market scanner, the, the goal is to find the best possible market, and then we would help find uh, those distribution partners in that market that you choose to go to. As you don't want to be finding partners in a market that's that gets a low score. <laughs> so you <laughs> yeah, want to so, yeah, you definitely don't want to spend your budget on finding partners in the wrong market. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. So we do offer that service as well. Okay. Yeah. Good. Martin, would you please take the next slide? We have to move on. Uh, okay, what topics would you like to learn more about? This is like um, to the quest, uh, question to the audience, but but like um, I don't know if you have any questions there. 
Is anyone typing? You can't see. No. Okay, let's <clears throat> move on then because it's quarter past nine already. It's time to wrap up uh, this time. Uh, well, we have uh, next um, next uh, event like this uh, coming up uh, the eighth of December, same time. And then the uh, is the uh, the theme is recruiting a new CEO. When and how? Mm. Uh, Nicholas Huotari, uh, CEO of A Talent, will be uh, giving his ideas together with uh, Pia Erkinheim, our business angel. That is a strategic decision. Yeah, that, that is definitely <laughs> <laughs> definitely a strategic decision. And the next day we have our gala, uh, ten year gala, the dinner party at Rati Huone. Uh, so the ones who have not signed in yet, please do it immediately. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Thank you. Excellent, excellent uh, discussion, very good points and uh, have a good day. Yeah, have a good day you. everyone. Yeah, bye. bye, -bye See bye. you next time.